Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the total lunar eclipse outlook as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. This is huge. We've got an eclipse happening November 7th or 8th, depending on where you are in the world. It is a total lunar eclipse. It's going to happen after the eclipse on the 25th of October. Now I covered that eclipse in my October episode, which I will link above and below. So if you've missed your mini report outlining how the first eclipse is going to impact you, you will definitely want to see that. In that episode, I talk about how the eclipse on the 25th is going to be all about relationships. We've got a lot of planetary activity happening around the south node. We've got Venus present. We've got Mercury, I'm pretty sure. Sun, they're, they're all there. They're all gathered there in, in Libra. Okay, so it's all about relationships. And it's very much about soul contracts being rearranged. Now, what's going to happen is the moon is going to move from that position and it's going to come up to Rahu. And we're going to have this incredible total lunar eclipse happening 7th, 8th November. So the moon is up there with Rahu, the north node, and what we're going to have there now that's happening in Aries. So I believe that, you know, we're, we're coming out of this phase where we have our relationships being shaken up or our soul contracts being renegotiated. This could be work for some of you. So work is shifting, work is changing. A lot of things are changing at this time, 25th October. The moon comes up to be with Rahu and now it's about, this is in Aries, this is about ourselves. This is about who you are as an individual. So in the first eclipse, it was more so about soul contracts, things happening around you, shifts with people. Now this is about you. This is about who are you going forward? Who do you want to be going forward? How do you want to handle life? You know, do you want to be a bit more rock solid? Do you want to be a bit more compassionate, easy on yourself and others? You know, you're going to have some opportunities here to reinvent how you do things going forwards. So it's really quite exciting. I'm excited about this eclipse on a personal level in terms of, you know, what, what we can do because this is just about you. This is in Aries. This, this is about you. It's about number one, right? Uh, so Rahu and Moon are together in Aries. Rahu and Moon are together in Bharani Nakshatra. Now Bharani Nakshatra, the deity there is Yama, which is the god of death. Okay, so this could be the death of an old way of being, an old way of responding, old cycles, old patterns within us that we want to evolve beyond. You know, we have the opportunity to grow in a better way, in a more positive way. We can be more ourselves. We can respond better. We can be more happy, have more fun, all these wonderful things, right? Yeah, I've got the note here, time to reinvent who you are. That's what we have the potential to do at this time. Now, Mars is the Lord of Aries. Mars is in retrograde during the time of this eclipse. This is potentially significant. Mars is casting eighth aspect onto Saturn. So that is a six eight relationship there with Saturn. He's in retrograde. There could be some attack energies present. Mars is in Gemini, I do believe. So it could be the kind of thing where there could be aggressive communication is how I'm seeing that. Uh, aggression, you know, sometimes I've seen when there's been difficult planetary energy in Gemini and things like that on that Gemini Sag axis, there can be air attacks or things like that. But I'm not particularly seeing any of that. I'm not really reading this one for the collective. This time I'm really going personal here. What does this mean for us as individuals? And I'm seeing an enormous potential to, to reinvent who we are on an individual basis. So that is how I'm seeing this eclipse. Now I've decided to talk about the eclipse in a breakout video uh, and not in the November outlook 
because in the November outlook, we have a beautiful Parivartana exchange happening. I'm pretty sure I've got this right. I was doing the notes for it a few days ago and I think Venus is receiving, she's in this Parivartana exchange with Mars and she's receiving aspect from Mars, from Jupiter and from Saturn. So that is gonna be fascinating and that's what I'm gonna cover in the mini readings for the November episode. So stay tuned for that. But today what we'll do is we'll go through the mini reports for each one of you to see how is this eclipse going to impact you. So I thought I'd do this in a breakout video and in the November outlook I'll be pointing you to this video as well so no one's going to miss out. All right let's take a look. So Aries, welcome Aries. Now this is Aries moon, Aries ascendant, Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you do not know your coordinates have a look at the link below. You'll be able to plug in your details and find out if you're an Aries or not. All right, so let's take a look. Now on the 8th of November, the eclipse is happening in Aries, barring in nakshatra in your first house. So for you Aries, this is all about you. This is time for you to reinvent yourself, to reinvent who you are, how you fit, Okay, we've just had all of these energies being shaken up in Libra, soul contracts being renegotiated, things are moving around us, but this is about you. How are you going to respond? Who are you going to be? You know, uh, I've got the note here. Where do you see yourself in 10 years time? You can even look at that. Who, who do you want to be far into the future? You can look at that as well because that will help direct you. That will help you pivot so that you can move forward more on that path. Lord of Barani is Venus and that that is Venus is on the eclipse line in your seventh house. So definitely your relationship scene has just been freshly renewed as of you know around 25th October. So in amongst all those changes, who are you? Who do you want to be? Lord of Aries, Mars, is going to be in your third house, casting aspect on Saturn in your 10th. So definitely be careful of heated words at work or amongst your peers at work. There could be some arguments, there could be some reason to lash out or something like that or someone lashing out at you, for example. Just be aware that that's a possibility. But Aries, I'm really excited about this eclipse for you. I think the energies here are, are amazing. And especially now that you've seen this report, you're conscious of what's going on. So you can truly make the most of this energy. All right, well, thank you for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. This is Taurus moon, Taurus sun, Taurus ascendant, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your coordinates, you can take a look below and you'll find all of that out. Now on the 8th of November, we have an eclipse and that's happening in Aries, Bharani Nakshatra in your 12th house. So what does this mean for you? Okay, ideally, Taurus, if you are traveling and if you have the ability to change your plans and not travel on this day, uh, I would recommend to avoid travel. That, that would be a wise thing. But if you can't, don't worry, travel, it'll be all right. Um, just build in extra buffer time, take extra care, that kind of thing, okay? And if there are delays, you know, this could be one of the reasons why. The other thing about this eclipse is that this could be a really excellent time for some escapism. I like this for you, Taurus. I think you've been working hard, Taurus, and I think it's now time on this day, if, if you're able to schedule this as a day without meetings, now I'm pretty sure, let me just double check, check, I'm pretty sure this is a Tuesday because I actually did this myself. It is a Tuesday, yeah. I've actually gone onto my um, scheduling system and I've made sure that I'm not doing any readings on the 8th and I've done that for the 25th of October as well. So I'm gonna consciously make sure I do this going forward that I don't do any readings on eclipse days because I did hear from someone that astrologers shouldn't do readings on the eclipse days. By the way, I do have one person who's booked on the 25th. It's okay, I'm gonna record yours on the 24th in case you're watching. But yeah, if you can 
rearrange your schedule so that you're not so busy on these days that would be a really good thing for you because you've got this happening in your 12th house this is actually really good energy for you to relax a bit for you to rest a bit if you can enjoy some escapism if you can you know I don't know enjoy books or your favorite tv show or this is time to indulge procrastinate not do as much work I've got the note here take the day off if you can I mean I won't be taking the day off but I will be doing lighter easier tasks on this day so interestingly I've I've done that anyway uh Lord of Barony which is Venus now Venus is on the eclipse line in the sixth house when this eclipse is on so client relationships or any legal cases could also be impacted at this time that's a possibility uh, and that scene that side of your life is being changed so the dust is settling there client relationships work relationships might have been freshly dealt with by the previous eclipse on the 25th there so just bear that in mind now the lord of aries uh, yes the lord of aries mars <laughs> is in your second house casting aspect on saturn in the ninth okay so at this time there could be some heated words may not happen it may or may not happen but just something to be aware of could be some heated words or arguments with father or gurus or seniors at work or authority okay that's a possibility there but otherwise Taurus it is looking like uh, a good eclipse for you possibly a time where you can you can enjoy yourself a little bit maybe an excuse to take some time out if that's possible for you all right well thank you so much Taurus we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Gemini Moon, Gemini Ascendant, or Gemini Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, if you don't know your placements, you can take a look. There's a link in the description below. You can find out what your placements are and you can enjoy these reports. All right, so now on the 8th of November, we have an eclipse in Aries, Bharani Nakshatra and it's happening in your 11th house so this is a really fantastic time for you to contemplate who you are in relation to your friends in relation to siblings or really close soulmate type people people who you consider as your you know uh, soulmates friends I've got so many like soul brothers and sisters and they're all older than me you know this is this is that kind of thing so contemplate who you are in your friendship circle or in relation to people that are really important to you this could also be your network circle your work circle as well you can could be a time to well maybe not on this day but maybe after this day you might change your linkedin profile or something along those lines uh, relationship with older siblings could be in focus at this time also another thing that could be in focus at this time is how you bring in wealth you might even get some ideas as to how to bring in more wealth that could be a possibility or what you need to do to change your business a little bit or you know rejig things so that you can bring more money in so often we're so focused on expenses and what's going out but we don't spend enough time contemplating all right how do we bring more in you know, that's that could be the better thing to do right so maybe you'll have some time here to do that now lord of Bharani nakshatra venus is placed on this eclipse line in the fifth house and of course she was there part of the previous eclipse so relationships with children could be really important at this time and your relationships with children could be being changed or transformed I have been working with some of you who are going through a process where you're splitting up with people you're, you're working out okay well how, how do we you know um, make this as little impact on the children as possible things like that people are working through these things so yeah this this is a time where that could be in focus okay uh, also relations with staff if you're a boss or any of that you know um, if there's any changes that are taking place there that's just something to bear in mind now Lord of Aries is Mars and Mars is in your first house casting aspect on Saturn in the eighth house 
So this could be a time where some heated words get exchanged. Sometimes when we have a significant thing happening in the sky, a triggering event, you know, things can happen with the other planets too. So be careful of arguments with partner or with extended family. But Gemini, this could be a really good time where you get to reinvent yourself, especially in terms of who you are with your friends. And it could be a time where you decide to let go of some friends. You might consciously let go of some friends or move on from some people, and that's perfectly fine. If you're growing, if you're going somewhere new, that might be something you have to do. All right, Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Moon, Cancer Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your placements, you can take a look in the description below. There's a link you'll be able to find out. All right, now on the 8th of November, we have an eclipse happening in Aries, Bharani Nakshatra, in your 10th house. So there could be some big changes at work, okay? And it's a time where you actually get to redefine who you are at work. Who do you want to be? Is this where you really want to be? You know, and if a big change happens, and this is an eclipse event, sometimes we can be eclipsed out of our jobs or a contract finishes early or something like that happens. Um, definitely see that as a blessing, okay? Because it's the universe's way of saying, all right, you're done here. It's time for you to move on to something that excites you more, something that you love more. It doesn't have to be something bigger and better. Maybe it's something smaller, but that you're more passionate about, you know? So this is a time for you to think about what you love to do, what you really want to do. And, and there could be, the, you know, the path could be cleared for the new to come in at this time. Now, the Lord of Bharani Nakshatra, Venus, is on this eclipse line in the fourth house. And of course, we had the eclipse on the 25th and the dust might be settling around your home or some, this could be some big change at home. Your home scene could have changed, relationships at home could have changed, soul contracts at home could have changed. Um, there could have been tension or difficulty with mother or the mother of your children or something along these lines, something to do with mother. Things could still be changing at home. Dust is settling there. Something there might take a bit of time, okay? Sometimes if there's a big eclipse event, we can be feeling that for about six months. So it depends. Sometimes an eclipse will come and go and you won't feel a thing. So that wasn't touching any of your sensitive points, but when it does, believe me, you, you will know. Uh, now, Lord of Aries, Mars, is in the 12th house casting aspect on Saturn in the seventh. So at this time, this, this could be triggering to some of the other planets. Um, there is potential for arguments with spouse or business partner. Just bear that in mind. But Cancer, this is a, a real time of reinvention for you. This is actually massively significant because this is touching both 10th and 4th houses. These are Kendra type areas. This is like, this is huge. <laughs> okay, so work definitely. Um, could be up for a major transformation and your home life has been po possibly a bit transformed, you know, by the time of this eclipse. So take care and just focus on who you want to be. Focus on who you want to be. You want to be that calm person. You want to be, you know, stylish and respond well and have humor and all those good qualities. Focus on that and you're going to come through just fine. All right. Thank you for joining Cancer. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon, Leo Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your placements, click on the link below, you'll be able to find out. All right, now on the 8th of November, we're having an eclipse in Aries Bharani Nakshatra, which is happening in your ninth house. So there are powerful changes happening in your relationship with authority. Imagine that, just the concept of authority. You're having major changes and upheavals in how you relate to that concept, how you exude that concept, how you exude authority, right? And very much look at this from, your, from how you exude authority. Definitely, this is Rahu 
uh, in Rahu Moon in Aries. This is about you on, on this side of things. So I've got the note here, you could step up and be more of an authority at this time. You could step up, you could take your power back. You could take your power back from where it's been invested in the past. So, you know, your parents conditioned you a certain way. Well, maybe you want to do things differently. Maybe you want to take your power back and you want to make different choices in a calm, confident way. You just want to go forward, do your own thing and not be held back by anyone, all of that, right? So this could be a time where you contemplate all of these things. I've got the note here, equally something could be mirrored back to you via relationship with father and or bosses at work or father figures, you know, it could even be government or things like that, right? So this is a, a really powerful time of contemplation for you and how you fit. Now the Lord of Barani Nakshatra is Venus and Venus is on the eclipse line in your third house. So perhaps there have been changes in friendships. Your friendship scene might have gone through a bit of upheaval or shifting or change as per the eclipse on the 25th of October. So just allow these changes to settle. Uh, the dust could be settling in that area of your life. Now the Lord of Aries, Mars, is in the 11th house casting aspect on Saturn in the 6th. So at this time it is possible that there could be some arguments at work, uh, there could be some arguments in client relationships or challenges there that just crop up. But overall Leo, I'm seeing this as a really powerful time for you, a powerful time for you to step up, to be more of the authority of your own life, to take more charge of your own life. That's, that's very much the potential. You know, ninth house here, this is leadership energy. This is you taking your power back. This is you leading yourself, taking charge. Beautiful. So love, love the energy here for you, Leo. All right, now we are going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo, Ascendant, Virgo Moon, or Virgo Sun, as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. If you don't know your coordinates, you can check that out in the description below. All right, so on the 8th of November, we have an eclipse in Aries, Barani Nakshatra in your eighth house. So something about this eclipse could help you to experience more of your occult gifts. And this is definitely a time for you to keep a little dream journal, keep a dream diary. Uh, perhaps you might be more in tune than ever before. So this could be quite powerful. I have the note here, do very little. Don't be busy on this day, okay? Meditate, avoid travel, keep your energy very neutral. Uh, there could be shifts and changes with shared assets or family as well. I'll talk about that in a moment, but the, the thing about doing very little, I did want to let you know, Virgo, I have actually gone to my schedule, my acuity scheduler, and I've made sure that no readings on the 8th, which is a Tuesday, and no readings on the 25th. Of October which I think is also a Tuesday and I've done that because yeah I think people shouldn't do readings and things like that and I know I've got a lot of Virgo light workers who come and watch these reports so if you work on people or you work with their energy good idea to not uh, if you can avoid it if you can't don't worry I do have someone booked on the 25th but I've said to them look I'll read you on the 24th oh well I'm saying that through this uh, video so hopefully I don't know if that I haven't checked their placements I should probably pop them an email and just let them know. But yeah, I, I'm conscious of that, not to work on someone's energy. It doesn't mean I won't be working. Of course I'll be working. I'll be making a video or editing or doing something. I'll be doing something, but I won't be doing a reading on that day. So do bear that in mind if you work on people's energy. It's a good day to not work on their energy. Uh, let's have a look here. Yeah, and there could be shifts and changes with shared assets, family. We've got Lord of Barani Nakshatra Venus on this eclipse line in your second house. So the eclipse on the 25th might have had some impact to shared assets, family. Let the dust settle there. If there's been a big shift or change there, it could take time. Uh, sometimes eclipse effects can take up to six months to, um, you know, to things to get back to normal or to a form of normal right now you've got lord of aries mars in your 10th house casting aspect on saturn in your fifth house apologies virgo i think we cut out there i was talking about the lord of aries mars is in your 10th house casting aspect 
and Saturn in the fifth. Um, definitely be careful how you speak at work. There's the potential for arguments here. And the other thing is uh, with children, if you've got children, take extra care with them. And if you, you, you've got staff, you employ people or any of that, take extra care there. There's just a little bit of more potential for arguments, that kind of thing, something to observe. But Virgo, all up, it's looking pretty good for you. And it's definitely looking like a good day if you can reschedule things in such a way that you're doing little or you're doing high, like you're not doing high impact work on the 8th. If you can schedule your diary so that things are just a bit easier that day, that'd be a good thing to do. If you have to be busy or if you have to travel or any of that, just do it mindfully. That's all. Virgo, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Sun or Libra Moon as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your coordinates, you can take a look in the description below. There is a link where you'll be able to plug your details in and find out. So now on the 8th of November, there is an eclipse happening in Aries, Barani Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So this is a time, Libra, where you can reinvent who you are in relationships. And this is an internal shift within you. This is not anything that you're going to be speaking about or telling anyone about or no one else needs to know. This is all internal stuff where within you, you decide that, you know, I've, I've, had, I've done enough of those relationships. And I really want to bring in the new. I really want to, to experience new relationships. I want, I want to have more fun. I want things to be lighter. I want things to be more loving. And all of that starts within you. And that starts within you being more light. It starts within you being more loving. And you, you're making the shifts within. This is a really important time for you, Libra. It's exciting. I'm liking this. Yeah, I've got the note here where you choose to be more loving, more rock solid, more compassionate, more light, more humorous, whatever it is you want to be. Now, the Lord of Bharani, which is Venus, is on the eclipse line in the first house. So on the 25th of October, the eclipse there was basically, I mean, that's a shake up around your whole sense of self and who you are. So the dust might still be settling there. So allow that to happen. But now it's time to reinvent who you are in relationships. And especially in relationships, this is marriage, love, the person that you're in love with, all that. This is that. Uh, it can be business partnerships as well. So, you know, you have the potential to reinvent yourself possibly at work as well in some way. But it's a good time to reinvent who you are or to spend this eclipse time contemplating who you are on the inside and, and, and how you want to grow. Now, Lord of Barani Nakshatra, Venus, is on the eclipse line in your first house. So your entire self is, is very much changing at, at this time, and it is as a result of that 25th eclipse. I've got the note here, take care physically as well. Okay, so take care of your physical health, your physical body, all of that. You can be... There is such a thing as ascension symptoms. There is such a thing as, you know, these eclipses come and people do get more headaches. People do feel run down or tired. Some people feel really energized. They feel like, oh my God, I have so much energy. You know, and I've been observing this through client sessions and people telling me that, you know, during this type of moon, they have all this energy, but during that type of moon, they're actually really drained and tired. I'm observing that in my own life as well. Um, the shifts that happen with the moon. So it's pretty amazing. So definitely observe and take care of yourself physically and give your body what it needs at this time. Now the Lord of Aries, Mars, is in your ninth house, casting aspect on Saturn in the fourth. So there's the potential for arguments uh, at this time and that could be with father or mother figures in your life. So just bear that in mind. But Libra, this should be an, a good eclipse for you, a really good time where you can potentially reinvent some things about relationships uh, and 
and bring in some changes and it all starts with you. It all starts with making the shift within you. Okay, so maybe some old dynamic or pattern within your psyche could be eclipsed out at this time. Wouldn't that be amazing, right? And that will just free you to have, to have more love in your life. I would love that for you, Libra. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon, Scorpio Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What do we have here? Well, on the 8th of November, we've got an eclipse in Aries, Bharan, and Nakshatra. This is happening in your sixth house. So this is going to give you time to look at how you compete with others. Uh, this is to do with competition. This is to do with people around you, people you compete with, and you get to decide in a more powerful way than ever before how you want to reinvent yourself going forward because something could be eclipsed out some old dynamic some old pattern that possibly you've been using subconsciously to hold yourself back what are the self-sabotage things that you've got going on in there scorpio scorpio's always got some a little bit little bit of self-sabotage going on in there right? That's natural. We all do. All signs do. But Scorpio does a little bit too. How, how are the ways that you've been self-sabotaging or have you been doing any of that? Yeah, maybe that could be eclipsed out at this time, right? Uh, you could be also looking at yourself critically, like how do you present yourself at work? And is this the person that you want to be? And this could be that thing where you're looking at your LinkedIn profile and you're changing it, you're modifying it, you're, you know, you're, modifying your CV a bit, something along these lines. I have the note here, this could be a time where you reinvent something about yourself work-wise, okay? Uh, legal cases could be impacted at this time. If you have any ongoing legal cases that could be impacted, definitely health could be impacted. Take extra care of your health. This is a great day to see if you can schedule a lighter workload. If you don't have to work as much, uh, on this day, on the 8th of November, that would be good. Or if you can schedule in tasks that are lighter and easier in nature, if you can arrange business meetings so that they're not on this day, that would be a really good thing to do. Also, if you can avoid travel and things like that, that would be good. Um, but definitely when it comes to work, see if you can make this a lighter, easier day. Now, the Lord of Bharani Nakshatra, Venus, is on the eclipse line in the 12th house. So as per the eclipse on the 25th, there are some hidden aspects of yourself that could still be shifting. Okay, so, you know, because there is quite a shakeup happening on the 25th, the eclipse there. And I've talked about that in the October report, you can have a look at that. But hidden aspects of yourself could still be shifting. Right? And that's your deep self, that's your subconscious mind, that's your spiritual self. Some of that could be shifting at this time. So just be mindful. You know, you might want to, this is not a time to push yourself or work too hard or any of that. Now, Lord of Aries, Mars, is in your eighth house, casting aspect on Saturn in the third. So there could be potential for arguments with either extended family or friends at this time. It's just something to bear in mind. Nothing may happen, but it's just for some people that, that might flare up or that might apply. But Scorpio, all up, I'm excited for what's ahead. I think like the, the path is going to be cleared in your work scene, hopefully, for some new good energy to come in. Could even bring in new clients. Okay, so this could be quite exciting for you. All right, Scorpio, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon, Sagittarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. I'm very glad, Sagittarius, that I'm not missing you this time. I think in the uh, October 25th episode, somehow you got eclipsed out. I cannot believe that, so I'm really glad that I'm on it today. Now, on the 8th of November, we are going to have another eclipse. This is happening in Aries, Bharani Nakshatra, in your fifth house. 
So at this time, you have the potential to reinvent some aspect of your creativity. Isn't that amazing? So if you're a creative professional, an artist, maybe you're a musician, any of those things, this eclipse could actually be impacting how you express yourself creatively. And perhaps you want to change something about that. Maybe you've always done it a certain way, but now you want to try something new. Maybe you want to innovate because we've got Rahu here and we've got the moon here. The moon, the mind, we've got Rahu, the innovator. You know, Rahu moon in the fifth house, that's Robin Williams. And he was innovating all the time, wasn't he? So you have got quite... I like this energy. I think you could you could reinvent yourself in some really cool and exciting way. Now, if you have children, how you are with your children could change or you could, uh, you know, improve the relationship with your children. Equally, some of you are going through some difficult things right now where you are going through things like divorce, families are changing, you know, and you're having to negotiate and work out how things are going to be with the children. So just watch out on this 8th of November. This is a significant uh, eclipse that is happening here in this area of your children. So do take care with that. If if there's, you know, um, so just be mindful there. But I've got the note here, you know, if it's to do with just your relationship with your children, maybe this is a time where you reinvent yourself and you bring in more lightness or more humor into those relationships there, you know, something like that. Now, the Lord of Parani Nakshatra, Venus, is on the eclipse line in your 11th house. So as per the eclipse on the 25th, there could have been some changes to your network or changes to how you bring in money or opportunities. Uh, the dust there, if something has changed there, the dust will be settling in that area of your life. So that's just something to be mindful of. Now, the Lord of Aries is Mars and Mars is going to be in your seventh house, casting aspect on Saturn in the second house. So there's the potential for arguments with either spouse or family members at this time. So it may happen, it may not, but you know, sometimes when there's an eclipse event or something like that, it can trigger interesting places in our charts. So who knows if Mars is triggered. Could be arguments with spouse or family members, but equally nothing may happen as well. Sagittarius, I'm liking this energy for you. I'm especially liking the fact that I haven't eclipsed you out of this report this time. You are here. We're all here. It's good. And I'm liking the fact that some aspect of your creativity could change. You could innovate. You could try something new from that point forward. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome... Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Right, what are we looking at? We are looking at the eclipse on the 8th of November. This is happening in Aries, Barani Nakshatra, in your fourth house, your fourth house of home. Okay, so this is a time where you could explore who you are at home. Who are you? What is your role at home? And, and that role that you typically play in the family, that could change during this eclipse. Isn't that amazing? Um, it could also potentially bring in changes in your relationship with your mother or a significant mother figure as well, or even how you nurture and nourish yourself. You know, that could also be something that is reinvented at this time. Now, the Lord of Barani Nakshatra is Venus, and Venus is on the eclipse line in the 10th house. And Venus, of course, was part of the eclipse on the 25th of October. And there could still be some changes at work uh, happening at this time. You know, the dust might be settling in, in that area. Of your life so that is quite interesting yeah big changes at work you're a bit like um was it cancer let me just check i think it was cancer yeah who's having the opposite to you yeah this is huge for you capricorn there could be a lot of changes that happen and you know sometimes eclipses come and go and nothing happens right so you probably don't have anything um significant on those those points 
but sometimes, oh, so many times as part of my practice, I consult with you guys and I see big changes that happen as, as a result of eclipses. So yeah, just see what happens for you. But this, this could be big for you, Capricorn, because it's in that kind of Kendra sort of area, fourth house. So change, there could be changes at work, changes at home. Big, right? Both areas are being uh, dealt with. Now the Lord of Aries, Mars, is in your sixth house, casting aspect on Saturn in your first house. So Mars in the sixth. You could really be going for it work-wise. Uh, you could be striving, wanting to achieve all that kind of thing, making the most of that Mars in the sixth energy. Great. But just don't be hard on yourself. Uh, and it could, you know, potentially be maybe a bit of... Uh, no, I am seeing that as being hard on yourself, yeah. Because I'm also looking at could this be like tension at work it could be a little bit of tension at work or in relationships with clients or clients being hard on you actually this could be that i knew there was something more here yeah there is more meaning we can draw out of this clients being hard on you so just take care it may happen it may not uh, but i thought we'd just have a look at mars and saturn because for some people those planets will be more triggered or active and there could be some impact there but overall, Capricorn, it's a big time. Take care. See if you can schedule less work. If you can not work on that day or not do much, that's a really good thing. But equally, uh, you know, just try and have a lighter day on the 8th of November, if at all possible. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Aquarius. Ascendant, Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your signs, you can take a look in the description below. There'll be a link you can find out. All right, on the 8th of November, we have an eclipse happening in Aries, Barani Nakshatra in your third house. So there could be changes with your friendships at this time. But the most important change is going to be the change that you make with your own energy. Okay, who do you want to be in your friendship scene? This is quite a fun thing to contemplate, actually, you know. Um, oh, I'll give you an example. What am, what am I in my friendship scene? I'm always a person that people come to. to t they all tell me their problems, and this has been happening my whole life. They tell me their problems, and um, what else? What else am I on the friendship scene? Yeah, I'm the go-to for like advice and that kind of thing, and telling the problems. I'm like I've got all the secrets of everyone, all that kind of thing. Um, but you know, what if I want to? What if I want to reinvent that? What if I want to change that? What if I want to be the funny one or the outrageous one? Or, you know, it could be like at this time, you have the potential to reinvent who you are with your friends or in your friendship scene. Your friendship scene could change as well. There might be some friendships that you decide, you know what? You know, we've run our course or, you know, if it's uh, I'm changing and growing and uh, I'm not compatible with those people anymore. This could be a time where you part ways from some friends as well. That's possible. You know, and sometimes people come back around later and all of that. So I mean, keep an open mind. And Rahu Moon, that is an open mind. When I look at that in people's charts, that's an open mind, right? So, uh, yeah, it's a good time. It's a good time for change. Now, Lord of Barani nakshatra is venus and venus is on the eclipse line in your ninth house so there could be changes to your inner authority at this time uh, and, and that that's happening as a result of the changes that we would have had on the 25th of october eclipse so this is a time where your inner authority is adjusting possibly you're taking your power back you're having more authority of, of your own life so you're probably, the dust is settling in that area, you're probably maybe getting used to some of those new energies that are coming in. Fantastic. Now, Lord of Aries, Mars, is in the fifth house, casting aspect on Saturn in the twelfth. So there could be some challenging energy behind the scenes, actually. This was quite interesting for you. There could be some unknown energy or something behind the scenes that is going on there, right? So a um, good time to keep a dream journal, if possible, and observe your dreams. See what happens at this time. You know, uh, you, you might be able to intuit 
or get an understanding of, of what's changing uh, behind the scenes, behind the veil there, right? All right, well Aquarius, I'm liking this energy for you. I think you've got great potential to reinvent yourself in a fun way, you know, in a more lighthearted way and call in some more appropriate friendships for you. Call in because, you know, next year, you know, uh, that could be that could be something that you're you're looking at. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon, Pisces Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. If you don't know your signs, you can take a look in the description below. There is a link. You'll be able to find out. All right. Now on the 8th of November, there is an eclipse happening in Aries, Parani Nakshatra, this is in your second house. So there could be some changes in your family. Okay, but more importantly, this is a time where you may be able to reinvent your role in the family. Okay, so what is your role at home? You know, and this is, we are dealing with that 2-8 line. You know, this could be the thing where you find that, wow, what, my role in the family is, well, I always get blamed. I always get blamed for things or I'm always the peacekeeper. Or, you know, I'm always this person. Well, that could change. That, that energy could shift and change. We've got an eclipse and changes in energy take place at this time. So something may shift in your family that will, or within you, ideally. Ideally, this is within you because this is Rahu Moon, okay? So this is a shift within you where you shift and realize, do you know what? I don't have to be that role and I'm going to be this person. You know, and whatever it is that you want to be, try to make that happen at this time. Now, the Lord of Bharani Nakshatra, Venus, is on the eclipse line in the eighth house. So, as per the eclipse that we had on the 25th of October, the dust could be settling regarding any changes to shared assets or big family changes. So, yeah, this is the 2 8 line. It's all family, it's all shared assets, it's big wealth. It's all that kind of thing. So there's some dust settling in that area. Equally, there's the opportunity for you to reinvent who you are in the family. This is really exciting. So, and that's just a shift within your energy. Okay, nobody else needs to change. This is about you. How are you going to change within so that you are more yourself and more who you want to be? Now, Lord of Aries, Mars, is in the fourth house, casting aspect on Saturn in the 11th. So there could be challenges in relationship with mother and or older siblings or in your friends network at this time. That's just something to be mindful of. This may or may not happen. Uh, sometimes when there's an eclipse, you know, different planets um, respond in different ways and get triggered in different ways. It also depends on what you've got going on in your natal chart. So there are many eclipses that come and go when nothing happens for me, right? And that's very typical, but there are eclipses where my whole life has changed. And so, you know, you'll, you'll want to take into account some of the placements in your birth chart for, for some of these fine details. But there is the potential here for, you know, heated words or exchange between mother um, and or older siblings, friends, network, things like that. But Pisces, I'm liking the look of this clip for you. I'm liking the fact that you may be able to change your role in the family. You know, this is a good time to do that. If, if nothing else, you'll be able to spend time contemplating your role in the family uh, and how you fit as an individual. Well, Pisces and anyone who has watched the entire report, I want to thank you so much for being here, for being part of the channel. All of your comments, likes and subscribe, everything, it all makes such a difference. And I'm just so happy to do these videos for you. Let me know how you get on in the comments below and I look forward to seeing you next time.